Hello, this is Two Ladies Midwest Adventures. I'm Julietta, and I am reading Heaven is Real, and we're on chapter 10. For another week after the emergency append appendix, append I can't remember how to pronounce that. The surgery on the appendix. Colton continued to throw up and we continued to pump poison out of his body twice a day using Dr. Holleran's rigging of plastic tubes and grenades. Slowly and gradually, Colton took a turn for the better. The up chucking stopped, but his color returned and began to eat a little. We knew he, he was on the meh end when he began to sit up and chat with us, play the video game console the nurses had stationed at his bed, and even take an interest in a br new stuffed lion that Cassie had bought him several days before. Finally, seven days after we checked in the hospital at North Platte, the medical team said we could take our son home. Like soldiers after a long but vicious fight, Sonia and I were both exhausted and overjoyed. On March 13th, we packed up the all the debris of a lengthy hospital stay in a ho hoggage pod, um, something like that. Shopping bags, duffel bags, and plastic bags, and headed for the elevators. Me pushing Colton in a wheelchair and Sonia holding a thick bouquet of going home balloons. Elevator doors had begun sliding shut when Dr. Holleran appeared in the hallway and literally yelled for us to stop. You can't go, you can't go. His voice echoed in the corridor and he waved his sheaf of paper in our direction. We've still got problems. A last minute test had revealed a radical spike in Colton's white blood cell count. Dr. Holleran told us when he caught up, caught up to us at the elevator, it's probably another ac abscess. He said we might have to, we may have to operate again. I thought Sonia was going to pass out right there. Both of us were walking zombies by then, and nearly reached our limit. Colton burst into tears. Another CT scan revealed new pockets of infection in Colton's abdomen. That afternoon, Doctor Holleran and his surgical team had to open up our little boy a second time and clean him out again. This time, Sonia and I weren't terrified. The shadow of death had long passed since passed from Colton's face, but now we had a new, new worry. Colton hadn't eaten something for like 10 days. He had weighed only about 40 pounds to begin with, and now he had melted away so that his elbows and knees appeared abnormally large. His face thin like a hungry orphan. After the surgery, I brought our concerns to Dr. Holler. He hasn't eaten more than a little jello or broth in almost two weeks. I said, how long can a kid go without eating? Dr. Holler and placed Colton on an intensive care unit and ordered extra nutrition for him and ministered through, through a feeding tube. But the ICU bed was as much for us as for Colton, as I suspect. We hadn't slept for nearly as long as Colton had eaten. We were absolutely ragged. Putting Colton in ICU was the only way the doctor could get us to go get some rest. Colton will be fine tonight, he told us. We have his own nurse at all times. He'll have his own nurse at all times. And if anything happens, someone will be right there to take care of him. I'll have to admit, those words sound like an oasis in a desert of exhaustion. We were afraid to leave Colton alone, but we knew Dr. O'Halloran was right. That night was the first night since leaving the Harris's home in Greeley that Sonia and I spent together. We talked, we cried, we encouraged each other, but mostly we slept like a shipwreck survivors on their first warm, dry night. After a night in the ICU, <clears throat> Colton was moved to yet another hospital room, and the wait and see cycle began all over again. When can Colton get out of here? When can we go home and be normal again? 
Now through Colton's bowels seemed to have stopped working. He couldn't use the bathroom, and hour by hour, he grew more miserable. Daddy, my tummy hurts, he moaned. Laying in bed, the doctor said even if Colton could pass gas, that would be a good sign. We tried waking, walking him up and down the halls to shake things loose, but Colton could only sh shuffle along slowly, hunched over in pain. Nothing seemed to help. By the fourth day after second surgery, he could only lie in bed, writhing as constipation set in. That afternoon, Dr. Holleran had more bad news. Came with more. I'm sorry, he said. I know you've been through a lot, but I think we've done everything for Colin we can do here. We're thinking maybe it would best transfer him to a children's hospital in either Omaha or one in Denver. Between us, we managed something like five nights sleep in 15 days. After more than two grueling weeks at Colton's bedside, we had nearly hit the row back to normal. And the elevator doors literally closing, our family inside with balloons, then the whole thing crashing around us again. Now our son was back in excruciating pain with no end in sight. We couldn't see, even see a horizon. Just when we thought it couldn't get any worse, it did. A a freak spring snowstorm was moving into the Midwest within a couple of hours. Thick drifts of snow lay piled against the hospital doors and in wheel well high in parking lots. Whether we chose the hospital in Omaha, eight hours away, or Denver, three hours away, there would be no way of a airlift that we could reach either one. That's when Sonia lost it. I can't do this anymore, she said and broke down in tears. Right about then was a group of people in our church decided it. It was time for some serious prayer. Church friend began making phone calls and long, and before long, around 80 people had driven over to Crossroads Riesling for a prayer service. Some were in our congregation and some from other churches, but they had all come together to pray for our son. Brad Dillon called me on my cell to tell me what was going on. What specifically can we pray for, he asked. Something a little odd about it. I told him Dr. Holler and said it would be a good he had said it would be a good sign for Colton. <laughs> so that night might be the only time ever in record history that eighty people gathered and prayed for someone to pass gas. Of course they also prayed for a break in the weather so that we could get to Denver. And they prayed for healing too. But within an hour the first prayer was answered. Immediately Colton began to feel better. That evening, he was able to use the bathroom. By the next morning, he was up in his room, playing as though none of his this nightmare had ever happened. Watching him, Sonia and I couldn't believe our, our eyes, except for being skinny. Colton was completely and utterly himself again, in less than 12 hours. We had cycled from completely desperate to completely normal. Around 9 a.m., Dr. Holler came in to check on his patient when he saw Colton up smiling and chipper and playing with his action figure the doctor was speechless for a long moment he actually stood and stared astonished he examined Colton and scheduled a round of tests to be triple sure that Colton's insides were on the mend this time Colton literally skipped all the way to the CT scan room stayed in the hospital another day and a half just to be certain Colton's turnaround stuck during those 36 hours, it seemed like we had, it seemed we had more nurses in and out than usual. Slowly, one at a time and in pairs, they would slip into the room, and each time their reaction was the same. They just stood and stared at our little boy. <laughs> That's cute. All right, that was the end of chapter 10. Um, Jenny, help. What? Jenny, help. All I can just have her give it to a thousand subscribers so we can start beekeeping. That's what you're supposed to say. Okay, like and subscribe so we can get to 1,000 subscribers so we can start beekeeping. Thank you. Like and subscribe so we can get to 1,000 subscribers so we can start beekeeping. Thank <laughs> you.
Thank you.